The placenta is a temporary organ which is formed during pregnancy and expelled out of the uterus after childbirth. It forms an important circulatory link between the mother and the fetus. It mainly performs the exchange of nutrients and gases between the mother and fetus, hence called a fetomaternal organ. It is circular or disc shaped approximately 15 to 20 centimeters in diameter and weighs 500 to 600 grams. It has two structural components. The maternal component is the decidua which is derived from the uterine endometrium. The fetal component is the chorion which is derived from trophoblast and the somatopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm. Functionally, the chorion forms finger-like processes known as chorionic villi which are surrounded by maternal blood which fills up the intervillous spaces. Hence, it is called hemochorial. The placenta on gross examination displays two surfaces, fetal and maternal. The fetal surface is shiny, grey and smooth. It is covered by amnion giving a translucent appearance such that radiating umbilical vessels can be seen under the amnion. It also provides attachment to the umbilical cord. The maternal surface on the other hand is rough and dark maroon in color. This surface is irregular as it is divided by fissures into 15 to 20 polygonal lobules called maternal cotyledons giving a typical cobblestone appearance. The essential component of the placenta are the chorionic villi. Chorion is a membrane formed by trophoblast and the underlying somatopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm. These trophoblasts differentiate into two layers. The outer syncytiotrophoblast where the cells lose their cell boundaries and form a continuous sheet of cytoplasm with numerous nuclei called syncytium. The inner layer is called cytotrophoblast, which is a cellular layer made of actively proliferating cells. The syncytiotrophoblast grows rapidly, thickens and develops small cavities known as lacunae. These lacunae progressively increase in size communicate with each other and are arranged radially. The syncytial partitions which separate the lacunae are now known as trabeculae. At the same time, the syncytium also grows into the surrounding decidua, eroding the walls of the maternal sinusoids. As a result, the maternal blood enters the lacunar spaces. Now, the trabeculae formed by the syncytiotrophoblast are surrounded by maternal blood which fills the lacunar spaces, thus inducing utero-placental circulation. The cells of trophoblast proliferate locally and penetrate the trabeculae. Now the trabeculae are made up of a core of cytotrophoblast surrounded by syncytiotrophoblast and are called primary chorionic villi. These are surrounded by the maternal blood in the lacunar spaces, which are now known as intervillous spaces. The extraembryonic mesoderm also penetrates the core of the primary villi to form the secondary chorionic villi. The mesenchymal cells in the core of the secondary villus differentiate into capillaries and blood cells thus forming the tertiary chorionic villi. The capillaries formed in the tertiary villi make contact with the capillaries developing in the connecting stalk, which in turn become connected with the intraembryonic circulatory system. So now the fetal blood circulates through the villus and the maternal blood through the intervillous spaces. The cytotrophoblastic cells also proliferate and penetrate through the syncytiotrophoblast to form an outer cytotrophoblastic shell. This gradually surrounds the chorionic sac 
and attaches it firmly to the maternal endometrial tissue. The villi which are attached on one side to the chorionic plate of fetus and on the other side to the maternal tissue that is decidua bisalis are known as anchoring villi or stem villi. The branches of the stem villi are called rami cori which in turn give rise to finer branches called ramuli cori. Also there are numerous villi that freely float in the intervillous spaces and are known as free or floating villi. Cotyledons Maternal cotyledons are polygonal lobes on the maternal surface of the placenta. They are 15 to 20 in number and are formed by the septa which grow into the intervillous spaces. Each maternal cotyledon contains 2 to 4 anchoring villi and their branches. On the other hand, one anchoring villus and its branches constitute a fetal cotyledon. Thus, the fetal cotyledon are 60 to 100 in number. In the placenta, maternal blood circulates through the intervillous spaces whereas the fetal blood circulates through the blood vessels of chorionic villi. Thus, these two blood streams do not mix with each other. The tissues which intervene between the maternal and fetal blood constitute the placental membrane or the placental barrier. All exchange of gases, nutrients and fetal waste products take place across this barrier. The structures which constitute the placental barrier from fetal to maternal side are endothelium of fetal blood vessels and their basement membrane, extra embryonic mesoderm, cytotrophoblast and its basement membrane, and syncytiotrophoblast. After four months, the cytotrophoblast and mesodermal layers thin out, and now the placental barrier is represented by a thin layer of syncytiotrophoblast and the fetal capillary endothelium. Placenta has several functions. It provides oxygen and nutrition to the fetus and thus facilitates its growth. The excretion of fetal waste products like urea, uric acid, creatinine and carbon dioxide it also provides passive immunity to the fetus by allowing the passage of the maternal IgG antibodies. The protection to fetus is provided by preventing the entry of certain bacteria, viruses and also acts as a selective barrier for certain drugs and hormones. It separates the maternal and fetal blood streams thus preventing antigenic reactions. The placenta also performs an endocrine function as it secretes hormones like estrogen, progesterone and the human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone. Placenta shows a number of anomalies. Normally, the umbilical cord is attached to the center of the fetal surface of placenta. If the attachment is towards the margin, it is known as battle door placenta. Sometimes the umbilical cord may be attached to the amnion and chorion at the margin of the placenta and the umbilical vessels then branch between the membranes before entering the placenta. This is known as filamentous placenta or furcate placenta. Based on the shape, placenta may be discoid, bidiscoid or lobed. Presence of an accessory lobe with vascular connections with the main placenta is known as placenta succenturate. Sometimes when the chorionic villi persist all around the blastocyst cavity, thus forming a thin diffuse placenta membranacea. If the peripheral edge of the placenta is covered by a circular fold of decidua, it is known as circumvallate placenta. According to the degree of adhesion, placenta accreta is pathologically adherent with the decidua bisalis. Placenta increta penetrates the myometrium of the uterine wall 
and placenta percreta penetrates the entire uterine wall. Normally, placenta implants on the upper uterine segment. However, when the implantation occurs in the lower part of the uterine segment and the placenta partially or completely covers the internal os of the cervix, it is called placenta previa. This may lead to complications and bleeding during the later part of pregnancy and parturition. The degrees or grades of placenta previa are First degree is when the attachment extends in the lower uterine segment but not up to the internal os. Second degree is when the margin of the placenta extends up to the internal os but does not cover it. Third degree is when the margin covers the internal os but not when it is dilated. And fourth degree placenta previa completely covers the internal os even when it is dilated. Teratogenesis. It is defined as abnormal development during the germinal, embryonic or fetal periods which may lead to congenital anomalies or malformations. The study which deals with the causes, mechanisms and patterns of abnormal development is known as teratology. Period of vulnerability. The third to eighth week of intrauterine life is known as the critical period when the embryo is at greatest sensitivity for teratogenesis and exposure during this period produces gross malformations. However, exposure at any stage during development may cause abnormalities as no stage of development is completely safe. The factors which are responsible for teratogenesis can be divided into genetic and environmental. The environmental agents responsible for producing congenital abnormalities are known as teratogens. Example, physical, for example, exposure to radiations, x-rays, chemical, that is intake of drugs, etc. by the mother, nutritional, vitamins, minerals, Either excess or deficiencies can lead to abnormalities. Hormonal, that is maternal intake of estrogen, progesterone or maternal diabetes. Maternal infections like rubella, syphilis, HIV, etc. Thank you for a patient listening. Happy learning and stay safe.